we all love our iPhones and we can't live without them but have you ever wondered what it's like inside the factories that make them fun fact the iPhone isn't actually made in China it's actually made in many different countries the reason why Apple's iPhone is determined as a Chinese import is that finishing is done in the country after a lot of traveling around the globe through Apple's global supply chain when trying to comprehend where Apple produces its gadgets two key ideas come into play and that's assembling and manufacturing to explain further the process of making the components that go into the iPhone is the manufacturing part while Apple designs and markets the iPhone it doesn't manufacture and produce its components instead Apple utilizes manufacturers worldwide to deliver individual components the manufacturers each specialize in specific components camera specialists manufacture the lens and the assembly screen specialists assemble the display etc on the other hand assembling is the process of taking all the individual parts built by specialist manufacturers and combining them into the end product a finished working iPhone in today's video we'll take a look at Apple's iPhone factory in China to see just how these phones are put together and what happens behind the scenes but before we get into it make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more tech videos like this of all places why China first of all how did Apple decide to have iPhone components manufactured somewhere other than America well it's simple really it's just not possible to manufacture the parts in America due to the sheer demand Apple faces the industrial facility in China where Apple products specifically iPhones go through the final assembly has roughly 300,000 employees in the US there are only a mere 83 cities that that the quantity of potential workers in the US isn't sufficient to cover Apple's needs in China an estimated one quarter of their labor force lives in dormitories owned by the company these quarters are located on Apple owned land because of the numerous amount of people living and working assembly plant to make things more efficient transporting those components to any US based plants would mean greater costs and possibly even delays and cost more funds to manufacture and do in overseas countries like China aside from that there are also expenses on employee insurance benefits and higher taxation since companies want to generate income added expenses are necessarily transferred to the consumer at increased prices for the products in simpler words this would imply that American manufactured Apple products would cost a lot more than its current price great move I can barely afford it as it is Apple's choice to outsource its manufacturing to China is truly about who can assemble the greatest number of Apple products within the shortest amount of time possible taking that into consideration this also implies that China can stay adaptable and immediately versatile to the needs of Apple in a report an Apple executive also expressed that the US no longer has the employees with the skills they're looking for one specific example would be the release of the latest I finished as quickly as possible Apple knew that it wasn't feasible with US manufacturing and that it would result in delays factories and they were able to quickly complete the tasks given this is because in China manufacturers can request a large number of engineers to deal with the necessary manufacturing overnight they have a bountiful supply of workers this permits them to complete a large capacity of the tasks quickly in short the US basically cannot hire 300,000 employees overnight and that makes China an adaptable and fit supplier for them so who supplies Apple with its parts Foxconn also commonly known as Han Hai Precision Industry Co is the world's biggest contract maker of electronics and gadgets with production lines across mainland China it's most popularly known for making iPhones and other Apple gadgets but that's not all it has a long list of customers including Sony Blackberry and Dell but how was the company born they were founded by a man named Terry Gao back when he was just 24 years old he started by borrowing seven thousand five hundred dollars from his mom to establish Han Hai in 1974 to make plastic knobs for black and white TVs growing rapidly on account of the soaring fame of personal computers and video games the company went on in the 1980s to make electrical connectors for the likes of IBM and Atari Foxconn's first factory in Shenzhen China grew to employ a huge number of workers ranging from a hundred thousand on many assembly lines and thus the company helped change southern China into a worldwide electronics manufacturing force currently the company employs more than a million laborers mostly in mainland China in 2016 Foxconn purchased a majority stake in Japan's sharp Corp for 3.5 billion dollars 
and is the first foreign takeover of a significant Japanese electronics company. It's also pursued a stake in Toshiba Corp's flourishing memory chip business, however rival bidders are expected to win. The founder of Foxconn, Terry Gao, has made it clear he plans for Foxconn to shape its brand and secure winning leading innovations of its own. Now let's take a look inside Apple's iPhone factory in China. China's iPhone factory has developed into what residents have dubbed iPhone City due to its work population surpassing many U.S. cities combined. Because of the number of residents, migrating merchants and entrepreneurs settle there and set up their stalls for services such as food, massages and other stuff. In the provinces and towns of Shenzhou is Foxconn's complete industry chain which has its headquarters and other subsidiary plants to ensure high efficiency. The plant is situated inside a reinforced zone furnished with customs authorities at the production line entryway to smoothen iPhone exports. It's also located a couple miles from the city's airport to facilitate worldwide shipments. Good thinking, Apple. But what goes on inside? Well, there are over 94 production lines for iPhones, manned by 350,000 employees, where every minute around 350 iPhone units are assembled. With this, 500,000 units can be assembled daily, making it no surprise that half the world's iPhones come from Shenzhou, China. One employee who's in charge of polishing an iPhone's LCD screen with a special substance states that she handles 1,700 units a day, which is around three screens each minute for 12 hours a day. Other jobs such as attaching chipboards can take up to a minute per iPhone. And it's not uncommon to hear of a single employee finishing around 600 to 700 iPhones a day. My back's starting to hurt just reading that. Foxconn's employees depicted work at the manufacturing plant as mundane, boring, and exhaustingly monotonous. But the worst task in the factory is the assembly area where they have to repeat the same task for 8 to 12 hours a day. Some of the employees even grow to hate it. Speaking of employees, most of them are around the ages of 18 and 25, while interns can be as young as 16. As for gender, they're roughly equal in numbers. Most of these laborers come from Shenzhou or villages near Henan, which is one of China's poorest provinces with a population of 94 million. Despite the already massive population, every day new employees show up to work at the facility. Every few minutes, a new worker arrives with a bulky suitcase and a shopping bag full of essentials. Some of them already have jobs secured, while others show up hoping to land an interview with a nearby agency's help. While nearly everybody in the zone works for Foxconn, employees who work on production can be distinguished by red and blue vests embellished by employee numbers. Nearby is one of these sprawling dormitories where there are at least a dozen 10-story apartment complexes. Each room can accommodate eight people and is furnished with bunk beds. The rent costs about $25 a month per person, with internet costing $3 quarters rarely get packed. As for the salary, Foxconn workers revealed that pay rates at the plant began around 1,900 yuan which is roughly 300 US dollars a month. The Chinese government doesn't charge payroll taxes from the workers' salaries. Following a 45-day trial period, base rates can increase to about 390 to 500 dollars per month. Workers who are eager to take on the night shift can expect their salary rise to as much as 785 dollars, overtime included. It was estimated by the nonprofit Students and Scholars Against Corporate Misbehavior that 650 dollars should be the living wage for the factory's workers, which means laborers would have to take on huge loads of overtime to make a decent living. But still, Foxconn's monthly pay is better than most non-skilled jobs in China. Even if compensation at the Shenzhou production line is lower than in Shenzhen, numerous employees prefer to work there because the cost of living is more affordable and it's nearer to their hometowns. But there's also a dark side to China's iPhone factory. It's amazing how China's factories never fail to deliver and meet deadlines, but efficiency and productivity have a darker side that we fail to recognize. Claims of poor working conditions have been made on numerous events. Also, news reports feature Chinese employees being heavily discriminated against, working horrendously long shifts, and little to no working relationships at the factory. Beijing News reported back in February 2015 that Gao Jun, an employee with the All China Federation of Trade Union, said that Foxconn purportedly forced employees to stay at work longer than required, resulting in occasional deaths by Kuroshi, or in simpler terms, death from overwork. Gao Jun added that the illegal overtime came about from light punishments and a lack of quality. 
Foxconn, in return, issued a statement scrutinizing Gao's allegations, arguing that their employees wanted to work overtime to earn more cash. That's not all. The Financial Times reported in November 2017 that it had discovered countless students working 11 hours a day at the iPhone X plant in Henan province, disregarding the 40-hour work limit per week for youngsters. In response, Foxconn reported that it has halted the intern's illegal overtime work at the processing plant where 3,000 students had been employed that September. Another one in 2019 was that there was a report stating that a portion of Foxconn's managers had utilized rejected parts to build iPhones. But it was the suicides among Foxconn employees that have really pulled in the media's attention. Among the first cases to stand out in the press was the death of Sun Dan Yong, a 25-year-old man who committed suicide in July 2009. The reason behind it was because he lost an iPhone 4 prototype whilst in his possession. According to The Telegraph, Sun Dan Yong's apartment was raided. He was also beaten up and imprisoned by security guards, as told by his friend. A series of suicides still progressed, which were mainly connected to low pay in 2010. Foxconn installed suicide prevention netting at the base of its buildings and vowed to offer significantly higher wages at its Shenzhen production bases in response to a spate of suicides in which 14 employees died that year. In 2011, Foxconn also hired the PR firm Burson Marsteller to assist in dealing with the negative publicity caused by the suicides. That year, the Nets appeared to help bring down the death rate, but still they couldn't stop four employees who ended up tragically taking their own lives. What followed was a protest by workers in January 2012 regarding the working conditions in Wuhan, with 150 workers threatening to commit mass suicide if the conditions were not improved. And that marks the end of this video. What do you think about China's iPhone factories? Would you want to work in one of these mega factories? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to stay updated whenever we release a new video. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.